Hey, everybody. My name is Brian, and if I'm ever given the opportunity to do a presentation with eight or more words in the title, I decide I've got to do that. I know that's a mouthful, uh, but let's get into it. You're all, you all care about AWS. Presumably, you care about security, which is why you're here and why you're listening to me. 88% of data breaches start at the identity layer, which probably isn't surprising. Attackers don't break in. The number one goal of a threat actor is to get access to credentials, because once you get access to credentials, you can move laterally, you can establish persistence, you can elevate your privileges, and you can get access to and steal data. I'll probably say this more than one time during the course of this presentation, but nobody breaks into a bank to steal the pens. They're after money. If a threat actor or an insider gets access to credentials that they can use, and if they're an insider, they've already got them, they're going after data. The way a threat actor typically operates is they get access to credentials, and then they exploit what we think of as the blast radius. Pick a random account in your AWS environment, whether it's a human account or likely a non-human account, like an API. Do you have any real idea what that account actually has access to? what it could do, where it could move laterally, both within AWS and maybe even cross-cloud or in hybrid environments, what could it actually do? And what data is available to that account? That's what we think of as the blast radius, and that's what an attacker is going to exploit. I'm gonna talk about a couple of examples about ways that threat actors are exploiting the blast radius and exploiting credentials. The first is our old friend, ransomware. If I get access to data, the most the easiest way, the quickest way to monetize access to that data is to encrypt it. To find it, lock it down, and then have you pay me to get it back. In fact, ransomware is often the last step in a kill chain. The data's probably been stolen already. It's, maybe it's been sold on the dark web. We work with a lot of organizations that have had to pay three or four separate times for one data breach. One, to get the keys to get their data back. Two, to prevent that data from being stolen or sold on the dark web, and three, to prevent that incident from being reported to the news. Ransomware is the last step in the kill chain. Ransomware exploits credentials. There's also malware that we call InfoStealer. This is an entire class of malware designed specifically to get access to credentials, like embedding malware in GitHub repositories for game cheats. Embedding malware, of course, in files and emails that people have access to. Even embedding links to malware in AI responses for tools like Copilot and ChatGPT. It's really all about the data. I said it before, I'm going to say it again. Nobody breaks into a bank to steal the pens. And of course, we make investments in security at all these various layers. We make investments in identity security because we want to protect our credentials. We make investments at the endpoint to try to protect the various perimeters that we've got. We make investments in our firewalls and our infrastructure. Maybe we make investments in DLP, trying to identify where sensitive data is and label it. But all of this is in service of protecting the data itself. And that's typically where we, even if we're making investments, where we tend to have the most exposure. One of the easiest things for me to say in security is that data is what most organizations have the most of know the least about, and do a terrible job at protecting. Now, you're sitting in this theater here because somebody mentioned data security posture management, which sounds fantastic. Don't we want to manage the security posture of our data? Of course we do. But DSPM, CSPM, SSPM, these are classes of products that tend to attack pieces of this problem in pieces of our infrastructure where all of our data lives. No matter what you're using for DSPM and CSPM and SSPM, you're probably not doing a great job of detecting when identities get changes in authorization or access, because these tools don't connect identities to the entitlements that grant access to data. It's very difficult to answer the question, what does this account have access to? If I put someone in this group, or add them to this policy, or assign them to this profile, what is that going to grant access to? There's no activity or cross-platform forensics. What did this user actually do? What did this identity actually do? How did this privilege escalation happen? How did this lateral movement happen? What data was actually touched? And that means they can't detect abnormal behavior. How would you know if an API started behaving strangely? How would you know 
if a human account was co-opted by malware? How would you know if a service account was taken over by a threat actor and started accessing data, especially if it was something sensitive, like your source code or your customer information, your employee data or other regulated information, and there's no data-centric threat detection? You can't put all of that context together easily to detect when something is happening. That means security outcomes are very difficult to reach. I can throw all kinds of acronyms, I can tell lots of stories, I can throw lots of keywords out there that makes it sound like I really know what I'm talking about, but when it comes to security, what we really want to do is measure and reduce risk and reduce the time to detection and time to response for a threat. If you're a CISO, basically you want to stop breaches, you want to stop fines, you probably don't have the people to do it, so you want to stop a lot of manual work, and you want to be able to prove that you did it. That's what a security outcome actually looks like. Posture is just one piece of the data security puzzle. I really love when I put a slide up there and everybody takes out their phone to take a picture of it, because it means I'm communicating something useful. We need to protect identities. Of course we need to measure and improve data and configuration posture, but we also need data-centric user and entity behavior analytics. We need to monitor the data. Much like a bank monitors your money, that's how my credit card called me last week because my card number had been cloned and was being used to buy gas in Montreal, and my, and my credit card company knows that Brian is not in Montreal right now. He doesn't buy gas at two in the morning, and in fact, that's a threat pattern that is indicative of a stolen card. So it took 30 seconds for them to send me a text, an email, and call me to tell me that my card had been shut off, everything is fine, they have another one in the mail on the way. You need to do the same thing with data, and if you are gonna prove that you are compliant, and you are gonna ensure that you've got the right detective and preventive controls in place, you need a full forensic record, not just of posture, not just of identity, not just of access and authorization changes, but of data access activity. Data-centric, I'm gonna back into all of this. What does identity protection actually look like? It means a full catalog of all of the accounts and identity resolution. Where does Brian have accounts across our environment, not just in AWS, but maybe in the other hyperscalers, maybe in on-premises data stores, maybe in the SaaS applications that we're making massive investments in, and we need to remove excessive exposure. We need to right-size entitlements and access. We need to ensure that identities only have access to what they are supposed to have access to, especially as those needs change over time. And when we track changes, we track permissions, we track configurations, we're much better at identifying potential threats, but we need to monitor the data. And we need to monitor data with context. Trying to catch a threat actor by throwing logs at the problem is like trying to find a needle in a haystack by throwing more hay at it. I'm not, I would never tell you don't log. Log everything, but you need to log everything with context. Monitor data, monitor identity, monitor authentication, monitor collaboration, monitor posture but combine that with data sensitivity and identity classification so that you know when privileged identities are accessing sensitive information, when third-party applications have access to sensitive data. Leverage UEBA to minimize the time to detection and time to response for any potential threat. Doing this without noise is difficult, doing it without noise is absolutely critical. And then we need a forensic layer. You need to have a record of everything that's taken place in your environment. Because otherwise, you can't answer questions like, what happened? Veronis has an MDDR and an incident response team, and I say this now to add context to this story, because during many or most of the big breaches, we are on calls with organizations that have been breached along with their preferred incident response vendor. And I was on one of these calls during the SolarWinds hack, and one of these vendors said something that stuck with me since then. He said, you know, we get called every time there is a breach. We get our million dollar retainer to come in and get boots on the ground and try to answer what happened. And the first question that gets asked is what data was touched? Everything else, how did the attacker get in? How did, how, which vulnerabilities do we need to close? Who do we need to notify? All of those are secondary questions to what was actually touched. Was our source code, st source code stolen? Was our intellectual property stolen? Do we have to tell our customers? Do we have to tell our employees? Do we have to tell the SEC? Because information material to our business has now been touched. The first question that I get asked, what data was touched? Ask yourselves, 
How difficult would that be to answer, especially if you don't have the context of sensitivity, identity classification, and a complete forensic record of everything that happened up to and after any potential breach? How do I know all this? This is what we do. Ronus was founded 20 years ago because nobody could answer any of these questions on a single complicated data store, like a file system. Now we've got data in S3 buckets. We've got data that is underlying AI, AI workloads in Amazon Bedrock. We've got data cross cloud and in hybrid environments. We've got more data than we've ever had and the complexity of trying to secure that data is greater than it's ever been. We don't just have one identity store, we have dozens. We don't just have one single sign-on provider, we potentially have two, three, four, or five. We don't just have one hyperscaler, we've got multiple. We've got internal and external users and applications creating and monetizing all of this data. So what does Veronis do? We give you the visibility that I've been talking about. We go far beyond data security, configuration, posture management. We go far beyond DSPM, CSPM, and SSPM. We don't just classify data, we don't just monitor it. We don't just look at identities. We combine all of that context together. We give you a complete record of everything that's happening, all of your identities, all of the associated entitlements, what they have access to, where your data is living, how it's being used, and then we use all of that monitoring and context to build automation to fix the problems that I'm talking about, to increase security and posture, to eliminate exposure, to do it safely, all while we are your eyes in the sky. Let's watch your data with the context of sensitivity and identity classification, minimize time to detection and time to response, and because this is a SaaS platform that connects into your hyperscalers, into your on-premises file systems and databases, into your third-party SaaS applications and combines all of it together under a single platform, we can be the eyes in the sky and tell you when something goes wrong. And that means you can lock down your AWS IDM, lock down the identities that will grant a threat actor access to your data detect abnormal behavior on data both within your AWS environment and cross-cloud and other environments and data stores. I don't care if it, the data is in a file, in a database, in an application record like Salesforce. We're monitoring it with all of this context so when something goes wrong, you know about it quickly and you can automate the remediation of these risks. When we find exposure and not just a configuration exposure like an exposed S3 bucket, we'll fix that. But how do you make sure that this account in your AWS environment, through the combination of profiles, policies, and direct entitlements, only has access to the specific data that that account is supposed to have access to? The only way to address this problem at scale is through automation. Because if it's not automated, it won't get done. None of us has the time and the people to go identify every misconfiguration on every data container, in every environment, in every hyperscaler, and keep that posture correct over time. None of us has the time and the people to actually do it. You need a machine to fix the problems that the machines are created. Veronis is a force multiplier for the security capabilities and technologies that you get in your AWS environment. We leverage your cloud trail. We leverage the identity center. We, identity center. we leverage guard duty and we take the telemetry that we get from your AWS environment we combine it with telemetry from the other hyperscalers and other data sources that we're monitoring. We give you a single data classification engine across your entire environment. We give you automation from a single platform to fix these problems, and we ensure that you are getting the most possible value from the security capabilities both within AWS and in the other hyperscalers and environments that you're using. We are designed to be a security platform that takes in telemetry from multiple sources, leverages the automation available, creates it where it doesn't exist, and gives you visibility cross-cloud and the context to fix these problems. And here is how we start. Most organizations, from a security perspective, don't even know what they don't know. I'm asking a lot of rhetorical questions today. Do you know what an identity has access to? Do you know where all of your sensitive data is? Do you know where there's exposures? Do you have the people to fix it even if you could identify it? And if you could do it today, how are you gonna do it tomorrow? And the day after, and the day after? When we have even more data, even more configurations to manage, even more regulations to meet, even more sensitive data that is material to our business. As our security requirements get more and more complicated, the need for a single security platform becomes ever more necessary. Vernus was created 20 years ago, again, because nobody could do this on a single massive file system. 
These days, we have data in files, databases, applications, cross-cloud, and on-premises, and we need to connect the dots, and we don't have the people to do it. Where our customers start is just by answering the unknown unknowns. It's a SaaS platform that takes a couple of hours to spin up at most in a really big environment. Give me a day. A couple of weeks later, I guarantee you, you will see things about your data that you've never seen before. And we'll have a plan to automate the reduction of risk, to minimize time to detection and time to response. We'll make your incident response teams, your security teams, your Amazon uh, cloud security teams and cloud architect teams dramatically more productive without requiring any more headcount. We built a platform to do this. It goes far beyond DSPM, CSPM, and SSPM. That's the beginnings of a solution. We connect the dots. Thank you all so much. I'm going to give you three minutes back in your day. Thank you.